I want us to get really into some of this music stuff because you're one of the musicians that's out there doing it and that I really respect. And I, I really mean that you're one of those inside the music. There's no, there's no halfway doing this thing. And that's ever so present on Facebook these days because you have a new goal. Do you want to tell people about it? Uh, it wasn't something that I was planning. Um, my parents live out West. Uh, so I was at home, home for the holidays. They live near Las Vegas. And it was uh, New Year's Eve, and I was home um, somehow watching some something on YouTube, a video, a Buddhist, some Buddhist guy talking about uh, starting projects and making your way and finishing whatever you set out to do. Uh, so like I said, it wasn't anything I thought about doing, and not even at that point did it register, but I woke up the next day and I had this idea uh, because there were people who were doing like a hundred days of practice and just talking about, you know, whatever their, that, that journey was. And I said, you know what, I'm going to post an idea, um, some type of, um, lick or idea or musical thought, uh, every day for a year. And once I got into it, I thought perhaps I should have just done a hundred days because, <laughs> Uh, a whole year seemed at that point was like, well, serious commitment. But I thought if I dropped out now, it would be so lame. So I kind of said, all right, I'm going to do it. I, I, I made the commitment. And um, there have been a couple days that I've missed because of traveling or uh, whatever circumstances. But I've, you know, I've tried to kind of make up um, maybe by posting two ideas the next day. I think I'm, I'm still a couple days off. I'm not exactly on track. But uh, it's something that has just taught me a lot and a lot of people seem to be responding in a positive way and people have said I should put a book uh, out compiling everything which I'm, I guess I'm going to do yeah uh, why not and and isn't that a neat concept where there's two things that you just said that I like to kind of highlight on Sonic Tonic Experience because it's about being inspired and educating and um, the fact that they always say, you know, make your goals higher. So a hundred days, sure. You made your goal three and a half times higher than that, which is awesome. So then you're saying I even failed a little bit and you kind of beat yourself up about that, but then check it out. Where are we now? How many days in we're way more than a hundred days. And so even if you failed three times, five times, 10 times, it's way more than a hundred. And so if by doing a higher goal, you know, True. We're at t today is day uh, 228. He's writing an, a new lick and sharing it with the world every day. Kind of, we're getting inside the musical <laughs> mind of Rick Margitza, which is so cool because it's very hip. It's intellectual and it's emotional at the same time. And uh, you can use these in your own playing and improve today. Yeah. And what made it easier for me, it's um, I'm letting, I, I didn't, limit myself to a format like it's going to be this and this every day so i'm just doing a lot of jumping around I, I go through my notebook which is what i practice out of um and i'll just pick something some of it's something that i maybe found a couple years ago that i have, have revisited or it's something that i find that day so uh and like i said the jumping around from maybe a two five lick to something that i play over a linear dominant chord as opposed to something that i play over a minor seven chord so when i put the book together i'm going to collate everything and put them into chapters so it'll have more of a organized line um through through the book but now it's just jumping around so it makes it a little easier to do it that way um because yeah oh my god another 24 hours have passed what am i gonna put <laughs> there? Uh, i think it's really cool it's been insightful for me like checking out these licks and it's kind of it's a deeper concept of thinking, well, I listen to someone like Rick Margetta. Um, I know you're a big Brecker fan. I know you're a big uh, Steve Grossman fan, big Coltrane. Um, it's when you hear that type of player play out and really advanced hipness, um, a lot of people might think that they're just kind of going, well, I know the C major scale, but I'm going to purposely play other notes. And that might be part of it. Um, but I love what listening and watching your concept and going, there's a lot of thought and organization and you're not playing 
just wrong notes or out notes from a C major scale if we're in the key of C, but you're actually going to other tonal centers for a brief period of time. Right. Um, well, a lot, a, a lot of it is based on on Coltrane's basically the three tonic system from Giant Step. So if you say C major, you include E major and A flat major. Um, so that's you know that's definitely a lot of it is based on his his thinking. And some some of the stuff I've I've found just because I like the way it sounds and I'll analyze it afterwards. So that's a little bit of a risk of thinking that the stuff um, of making it too intellectual. Um, so sometimes the analysis analysis comes afterwards. So I'm still trying to use my ear and emotions as, as, uh, in terms of I like the way this sounds and it makes me feel good. And then I'll figure out afterwards what it is. So it's 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 a combination of both of those things going on. But it's definitely um, not random. There is something that does come out in a random way. I I found out that there is usually some type of logic to it anyway after the fact. Yeah. So. And I I'm glad I could squeeze in the very back of your clinic at the gen conference in january because it was jam-packed in there and uh rightly so and um i was <laughs> ironically standing right behind the one and only gary campbell so that oh, was really um hearing uh you speak and watching him learn from you and you were a former student of his at miami and um what a what a cool vibe in that room. And what really I was struck by is you kind of taking what he taught you of this concept. You know, it's a big thing for sax players at Miami with Gary Keller and Gary Campbell of like, learn your scales. And that means not just up and down in one octave. That means full range of the horn and just busting it up into all categories. And um, I hadn't heard you talk about that to that detail and it just blew my mind the amount of methodic um, practice and thought that goes into just learning one scale and really getting it under your fingers do you want to give us two cents on that yeah uh well gary campbell for those of you who don't know is a great saxophone player who wrote a couple uh, amazing books i think it's one is called expansions and one is on triad pairs uh he was my teacher for a while at university of miami and I learned a, a lot about how to practice from him. And he also um, went to Indiana University at the same time that Michael Brecker was there. And they used to practice together. And Michael credits Gary as being a big influence. So, uh, yeah, the workshop we did uh, in New Orleans was amazing because in the middle of my talk, I hear this voice that comes from the, from the back saying, and tell him about this. And it was Gary saying tell them about this you know something that we we, we had worked on together uh so that was really really cool uh really special moment and uh you know his one of the main concept concepts is whatever you take be it a triad or scale two notes six or whatever it is is you work it like we call it just working it through the routine which is Whatever you're working on, you play it in one, uh, either up or down or up and down, different combinations of directions and different intervallic relationships, which are half steps, whole steps, minor thirds, major thirds, and fourths. Those are the five main families. So when you practice a C major scale, you practice it next to C sharp, next to D, next to E flat, next to E next to F. So you start to hear those relationships um, and feel the relationships physically and, and, and hear them. I mean, that's like in a, in a nutshell, something that usually takes about an hour to, to, to explain <laughs> thoroughly. Yeah, And I loved how you were going thoroughly through it. And then you're one of those awesome people that can not just talk about it. And you've given this all this thought, but you've actually done it with action so then you can pick up your horn and you just can this is what i'm talking about da, 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 da. and mm. it's it's such a inspiring thing to see that go down um i guess one thing that i'm always curious about and i think a lot of people that are listening will be thinking 
Yeah, but that's Rick Margitza. He's this gifted guy, and for some reason, he can do it. What's your recommendation for someone going, I do want to take it to the next level. How do I stay with it? Um, I come from a really musical family, and my father was a classical violinist. So I kind of grew up in this household where I saw discipline in action. I saw him practice. So that was part of it. And I started playing classical piano. And uh, knowing that my dad was in the house as I was practicing was, he never put pressure on me, but I felt pressure because he was there. So the discipline kind of came naturally because I was in the environment where it was kind of necessary because I uh, had a, a really great old uh, famous Russian Jewish piano player who required a lot of work. And of course I wanted to please my father. So I realized that if I didn't do the work, I would not be prepared for this guy. And um, I didn't like that feeling. So that was part of it. Um, but one day I heard I heard a Charlie Parker record. Uh, my mother also played a lot of jazz in the house, so there was classical and jazz music going on. And when I heard Charlie Parker, it kind of just flipped the switch for me. And um, I decided that that's what I wanted to do. And at that point, it became less discipline and less work, and it became more fun. I remember kind of being in school towards the end of the end of in end of the day, say seventh grade. And instead of thinking, God, I got to go home and practice at the piano, I was like, I cannot wait to go home and put on the records and start playing along with the records. So, you know, part of it for me it was just fun. Uh, and then, of course, at a certain point, you realize that there's work involved. It's not going to be easy. Uh, it's not all easy and it's not all fun. Um, but to me is when you start feeling that you're making some progress or hearing that you're making progress, that becomes inspiration to keep working. So the fact that you start feeling results makes the worth the, the work feel worth it. Yep. Um, and then this, you know, it's not to sound too corny, but it's a kind of a Buddhist thing. It's you, at, a, at a certain point you realize it's not really about the goal; it's the journey itself. Mm-hmm.